Now, let's talk a little bit about hidden divergence. What is hidden divergence? Okay, for those of you that are completely new to this, I guess I should first explain what I mean when I say divergence. Uh, divergence is, is when two things are moving away from each other. Uh, you know when you go to the grocery store, you go to the big box store, and you go in and your wife's like, oh, I want to go look at these curtains, and I want to go look at these towels, and you're like, oh, well, yeah, well, I'm going to go look at the fishing poles and the lawnmowers or something, you know, and she goes that way and you go that way, that's divergence. And then at the end, when 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 it comes times to pay and she comes to find you so that she can get your billfold or your, or your credit card or your debit card or whatever it is, you come back, to, that's convergence. So divergence convergence and what traders do a lot is with a, a an oscillator whether it be MACD or stochastic or, or or one of those indicators they will use the peaks and valleys of the indicator along with the peaks and valleys of the price on the chart and see whether they are agreeing or disagreeing on what is about to happen you can see here what we have is the RSI indicator across here this is set on the period of seven now, what we're looking at here is the Australian dollar 240 minute or four hour chart. And you may be wondering, why is everybody so interested in this convergence and divergence things? And the reason they are, are interested in it is everyone that's been around Forex for any length of time at all has heard the saying, the trend is your friend. And then you'll hear other people say, well, the trend is your friend if you're in it the right direction. Otherwise, it's your enemy. Or they'll say the trend is your friend until they bend at the end. You'll hear that too, which means it's, it's good to catch a trend when you can, but it's also good to know when that trend is in the process of dying. And that's one of the things that, um, that's really the thing that people are looking for when they're checking for a divergence. Now, if you look at this Australian dollar chart right now, you can see that uh, it is at uh, 74.71 cents right now up there in that top right hand corner. And you can also see that Friday, let me zoom in on a little bit here. Friday here for this four hour candle, if you look down here below, right here where I'm, how high the, the uh, RSI was. This is unusually high for a four hour chart, for a four hour chart uh, reading, this is high. Because you can see right over here on the left where this purple number is here. I may be in the way of it, let me, right here. As I move across here, when I mouse over that spot where that is, you can see that was 91.068. Now, it was like April of last year uh, when the RSI got this high on a four-hour chart on the Australian dollar. But you can see that today, now it is at 83, because now it's, it's, it's Monday. It takes me a while to put these videos together for you guys. A lot of you guys don't realize how much time is involved in putting these videos together. But now it's the next day. It's Monday now. You can see we've had a, we've had a, 24 hours almost has gone by since I started making this video because I have to make it as I can make it. But I want you to notice how we do actually have divergence, what would be called bearish divergence. If I were to draw an arrow on this chart, you know, from here to here on the peaks, and I was to draw an arrow over here at the same, and you want to make sure you line your hash mark up to the same spot so that you're marking from same spot to same spot. From there to here, you can see that those arrows are indeed diverging. They're going away from each other. This is an indication that this uptrend is dying. Now, what can happen now is the market can just go sideways and the relative strength index will fall and fall and fall because it has no more room to go up. It's almost at the top. It only goes up to 100. But if time will go by and, and the market will go nowhere, just go sideways, the relative strength will fall off and fall off until it builds enough room that it can rise again. Or actually the market can turn right here. I would like to see it take out that 75 cent mark right up there and before it starts heading south. But you can see that this is truly divergence. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because there's, there's a, a term that we use in Forex trading, that doesn't, when we say divergence, when it's really not divergence at all. And one of the, let me, let me find this, another spot here on the chart at the bottom, when it goes around the bottom. Here's a good spot right here where it put in this double bottom. Now you can see if we were to draw an arrow across that from here to here, let's say basically a flat arrow, 
But if we were to go to the same spot down here on the RSI and draw an arrow from that point to that point, we can see that this is what they would call bullish divergence normally. But you can see these arrows are not pointing away from each other like we saw uh, when it went over the top while ago, like it is right now. These arrows are actually converging. So when you hear someone say bullish divergence, they're actually talking about convergence. You know, if we were to use the same the same thing here, see, same thing. This is actually rising while this actually is a tiny tad bit lower. It's actually convergence, but they call it bullish divergence. It's, it's much the th same way when people are always talking about risk reward ratio. I want at least a two to one risk reward ratio when really what they mean is I want at least a two to one reward to risk ratio. But everybody says it backwards. It's just one of those things in Forex that you have to get used to. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about the difference between normal divergence and hidden divergence. As I said, this right here would be termed bullish divergence because we can see this is rising and this is not. This would be called bearish divergence because this is showing that it's going higher and the indicator is saying, no, we're losing our steam. We're about to fall off of a cliff here, maybe. So that's normal divergence. So what would be hidden bullish divergence? Well, what I want you to notice is, is as it's going around the bottom here, we're focusing our attention on the on the bottoms of the candles, aren't we? On the swing lows. And we're, finally, we're focusing on the swing lows of the indicator as well, see, to determine when we have this bullish signal. Over here at the top, as the market is going up, we kept looking at the, the tops of the swing highs and the tops of the indicators to see if we're going to get some bearish divergence. But the point I'm wanting you to take away from this is that uh, over here, we're watching the bottoms. Over here, we're watching the tops. In other words, right in here, we're looking at these two swing highs right here, and we can see we had lower swing high here. We had some bearish divergence right here. But what when we're looking for hidden divergence, we're not paying attention in an uptrend. We're not paying attention to the tops. We're paying attention to the bottoms, to the swing lows on the way up. In other words, as it's going across here, you know, we keep looking at the tops and we keep looking at the tops down here, but we're, we're paying very little attention to the bottoms. It's like we're just not, it's not even on our radar, right? And you can see that most of the time, you can see here it made a swing low and then it made a lower swing low. Down here, we've got the same thing on the indicator. No, nothing unusual about this. However, there are times when it will be unusual. Let me find a good instance of some, of some hidden divergence for you. Okay, now here's the spot. Now I just explained to you how bullish divergence is actually convergence. Here's a couple of examples of that. Here we see uh, these spots right here where we had what they would, what they would term uh, bullish divergence, which is actually convergence. You can see the same thing happening right here. Makes the double bottom and then, uh, whoops, makes the double bottom and then down here it makes a higher low. So you can see that is actually a bullish signal and they both were actually very good. I mean, when this happened, you can see the market went up. Each one of those horizontal lines is 50 pips. So this is a pretty good move. Same thing here. When it put in this, uh, this uh, higher low here, you were pretty well looking for an up move, a bullish move. And even though they call it divergence, it's actually convergence. However, there is bullish divergence that is truly divergence. Uh, and that is hidden bullish divergence. Now let me show you. Let's, let's look at this carefully. As it went up and made a peak, it made a peak here, and then it made a, a higher high, and we also got a higher high on the indicator, right? And then it made a low, a, a low here. But what I want you to notice is that this low is much lower than this low. We made a higher low on the price, but we did not make a higher low on the indicator. We made a lower low. So you can see if we were to draw lines on here like so, from this low to this low, and then on the same spot, and make sure you put your crosshair on the same spot, draw from that level down to that level, 
Now you can see that those two lines are truly diverging. They're going away from each other. This is hidden bullish divergence. And what this is, is telling us is, again, we're trying to ascertain, is the trend about over? Is it? Is this where it's gonna turn and it's gonna keep going down or is it gonna turn and go up? Well, this indication right here tells you that the gun is almost completely reloaded with new ammunition, new strength, new stamina to take the market back up again. It can't continue down when the RSI is already in an oversold condition. So we're kind of reloading the stamina into the, into the marketing engine here. So this is hidden bullish divergence. When we actually get a higher low on the way up, remember, normally when we're on the way up, we're watching for divergence on the tops. Like here, we did actually get divergence. Finally, we got some true bearish divergence right here. You can see signaling that this peak right here was really reaching to try to maintain these levels. The, the, the stamina was uh, beginning to wane a little bit. So let's, now let's find an instance of hidden bearish divergence. And where that happens, is on the way down, we are going to be watching the peaks. We're going to be watching for the peaks to be forming lower peaks on the prices and yet higher peaks on the indicator. Is that possible? Let's look forward and see. Okay, so let's look at a little section here again. Now, now keep in mind, this is a four hour Australian dollar chart. So this and those horizontal lines are 50 pip lines. So this isn't something that just develops in a few minutes or a few days and you're going to miss it if you don't if you don't constantly stay tied to your charts because you can see it takes a while for these patterns to develop for the divergence or convergence to develop on the chart. So it's something that you have plenty of time to look for each day when you go and look at your charts. Just take a glance and look and see what you see happening. There's no rush about getting into it and that'll give you an idea of how much strength is left in the market as far as whether it's going to continue its trend or not. So let's look here. As this was coming down in this downtrend here, obviously we're in a downtrend here for days, uh, several days in the Australian dollar, right? And as it was coming down, we can see that here we have a swing low and here we have a swing low and here we have a swing low. And you can see we got some divergence right here, the kind of divergence that, that everyone notices, the kind of divergence that is not hidden right here on the bottom, right? This is bullish divergence, right? So now what we're looking is, we're looking for bearish divergence, but hidden bearish divergence. We're, we're looking for an indication that the market is going to fall uh, in a downtrend instead of in an uptrend. So what I want you to notice is as it comes down through here, and then it just kind of goes nowhere, stays within a 75 pip range for several days here. It falls off some more. Once again, we get a little more bullish divergence or true convergence right here. Right? And then we're thinking, okay, the market's going up right here. But what I want you to notice is as this thing is falling, I want you to notice the peaks as it's falling. I want you to notice these across through here. For instance, look at just from here to here. Look at the difference in the peaks. As the market was falling, it made a much higher high on the RSI. This is hidden bearish uh, divergence, but as you can see, hidden bearish divergence is really convergence. The merrills are going towards each other. As it continued to fall further, as it came on down to this level here, you can still we you can see we still had bearish hidden bearish divergence showing up, and you can see it wasn't lying. It did fall from here, and yet again when it made a new high, and it fell even further down the RSI made an even higher high. So this is bearish divergence, hidden bearish divergence. This is what it looks like. It's a, it's a lot harder to see. It's a lot harder to notice, isn't it? So what I usually do is I usually look at my chart. And of course, if you're keeping up with this and putting arrows on your chart, as you do on TradingView, when you go back to the website, your arrows are still there. But I will, uh, once I've, I've gone through my charts and looked at them, Every day I look and see if it's made a swing high or a swing low. Of course, it's not near as time sensitive if you're looking at four hour charts. Now, if you're trying to do this on five or 15 minute charts, 
you're going to have to be very vigilant and, and only trade for like two or three hours a day or you're going to drive yourself batty. Now I'm going to scroll through here a little bit. Let's see if we can find another place that has hidden bearish divergence. Remember what we're looking for here is we're looking for a, a trend down. Let me move this up. We're looking for it to trend down but and, and, and making higher highs on the indicator than we are on the on the price. You can see here's another place right here. You see how we've made a much higher high here and the price is much lower. This gives you an indication that the trend is going to continue. Hidden divergence is a trend continuation signal whereas normal divergence is trying to tell you that the trend is about to turn on you or is getting very close. That's the big difference. Hidden divergence trend continuation. Divergence, trend is about to stop and go the other direction on you. So this is something that for you to start looking for, start going through your charts and looking at all of the things that are on the chart that you have never noticed before. Someone said once that, you know, people look at a chart and they see what they want to see. And I say when people look at a chart, they see what they know to see. If you did not know to look for hidden divergence, you would not be looking for it and you would not see it. Just like right here. Do you see the hidden divergence right here? Is your eye beginning to pick it up yet? From here to here, we made a lower high on the price. Down here on the oscillator, we made a higher high signaling hidden bearish divergence, signaling the trend continuation of the downtrend that we're in. You know, whichever direction this arrow on the price is going, that's the trend continuation direction. That's the direction you need to be looking to get in. And you can see right here at the very tip of it, we actually had further true bearish divergence show up right there. Let me get this out of the way. Indicating to you that not only did we have hidden bearish divergence, but we also had, which is really convergence, but we also had true bearish divergence. So these are the things to be looking for. And look at that, that's a, that's a 200 pip fall there. So if you know to be looking for these things, how often do you really need to trade? How long can you wait for a trade to develop, for a pattern to develop for you, if you know that you're gonna get 100 pips whenever it does develop? And this is just one currency pair. You don't have to be in any hurry. Uh, you don't have to be looking at five minute charts. Now you can, when you see this divergence develop and you've got a pretty good inkling that it's getting ready to fall or it's getting ready to rise, sure, there's no problem with going down to your trading time frame, as they call it, go down to your 15 or your five minute chart and look very surgically for the exact time to get in. Maybe there's a tiny Gartley farming, forming on the 15 minute pattern, uh, on the 15 minute time frame. And then you, when it's, when it says it's time to go short and you're, your larger 240 minute time frame says that's the direction we're saying it's going, then you know it's time to go short. And that really will greatly increase your odds, your probabilities of how frequently the trade direction that you choose is right. Now, of course, if you use my Jim Dandy trade management tool, which you can download into any MT4 platform, if you go into your MQL5 market and you look for my Jim Dandy uh, trade management tool, you can download it and you can play with it for free in your strategy tester all that you want to to see how well you are at how good you are at uh, at finding these and and, and then trading uh, with that i'll put a link in the description below on how to download the tool and how to how to go to the web page that explains all how to use it so hopefully you under, understand a little bit more about what hidden divergence is remember it's signaling a trend continuation and you understand what divergence is, which most people know that it, we're, we're, we're looking for the, the bend. We're looking for the end of the trend and, and it's time to jump out of the trend because we're starting to get divergence or it's, it's time to start looking for a short signal on a smaller time frame because it says the trend is about to go the other direction, something like that. So anyway, that's hidden divergence. Now, I wanted to make sure I'd, I don't leave you with the false impression that all you need to know to trade Forex successfully is, is how to spot divergence and hidden divergence. There's many more things uh, that you need to take into consideration. Uh, previous market structure to the left on the chart, uh, Fibonacci confluences, different things such as that. And 
news items and things that are come out that may make uh, the market make some kind of a move that makes absolutely no sense for uh, an hour or two. So I don't want to leave you with the impression that, that um, figuring out hidden divergence is the only thing you need to know because there's a lot more to it than that. But you can't overcomplicate it too and try to combine 17 different indicators on your chart and have a big mess and, and get, get into analysis paralysis where you can't make a decision. But I didn't want to leave you with the impression that divergence is all you need. Look at the whole chart, look to the left, look at a big enough picture on a large enough time frame, and then move down to a smaller time frame once you get the big picture in your head and kind of get an inkling of which direction you're wanting to trade and then look for a trade signal in that direction. Pip pip.